say, have you ever wanted to make your own dog treats at home using ingredients you have on hand to create flavorful and healthy treats for your dog? I'm Paris Permenter, and I'm the publisher of DogTipper.com and the founder of Paul's Art Gift Store, but I'm also the author of the Healthy Hounds Cookbook, My Dog Says I'm a Great Cook, and in just a few weeks, a new cookbook called The Yucky Puppy Cookbook full of flavorful, really honestly smelly treats that your dog will love. And so today I want to uh, I want to share with you one of those really smelly dog treats that I think your dog's going to love. And I've got some options here so that you can substitute items that you have on hand and you don't have to make a special trip to the grocery store. Uh, today we're going to make uh, a fish dog treat. Now, you know, if you've ever seen your dog around cat food, you'll know that they're, they just go crazy about cat food. And a lot of times that's because it is a fish flavored cat food. Sometimes we don't think about making fish flavored dog treats, but they are, you know, they're very popular with their dogs. And I use them with our dogs. I, I'll make soft ones to use as pill pockets to hide a pill inside. I make small ones to use as training treats for the dogs. So they're very versatile. What we're going to make today, I'm going to use a can of mackerel, but you can also use sardines if you've got those on hand, uh, anchovies. You might want to use salmon, that's a great choice, tuna, uh, kipper, herring, whatever you've got on hand, you can make do with this because it's a really versatile recipe and just a few ingredients. So what we're going to do, we're going to use one can here of the mackerel, and this is packed in olive oil. The olive oil will be good for the dog's coat, so I'm just going to drop the mackerel out into this bowl. I'm not worried about keeping the mackerel together or anything like that. I'm just gonna just press it here and break up that fish. And you just do the same thing regardless of the type of fish you're using. The only thing you really want to avoid is if you know do not buy like anchovies in a chili sauce or anything like that. But as long as it's in water or in olive oil, um, you know that's a good choice for your dog. So I'm just Work in this right here. Just break all that mackerel up here with my fork. And you see, it's just all flaked now. Mixing it up with the olive oil. And I've already preheated my oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. So it'll be ready to go when we're ready. Now what I'm gonna add, this is half of a cup of rice flour. You know, I know right now, it's tough for us to find a lot of flour. So many of us are baking right now that it's very tough to find conventional flours. Um, whole wheat flour is tough to find. All-purpose flour is difficult to find. But it is often pretty easy to find the alternative flour. So this is a brown rice flour. It, uh, it's a little bit flakier a lot of times. and, and it really, It's kind of a heavy dough, but that's okay. Uh, tapioca is a good flour you might that's, that is our cat, Jetty, checking out. <laughs> I think she smells the mackerel. Um, tapioca flour is a good one to pick for your dog because that's a good option if your dog has any allergies. So just pick the one that's best for your dog and one that you can, you can get in the store right now. We're going to add one egg. And this is about half a cup of water. And I'm just going to add it a bit at a time if I need it all. It's going to depend on the fish you use and how much oil was in with the fish. I'm just going to mix it all up. This is not going to be a very pretty dough. It's not going to be like the cute, the cute treats you cut with the cookie cutters. We're going to make kind of a drop cookie on our cookie sheet. Need a little bit more water. Then I'm going to add two tablespoons grated parmesan and this is optional if you don't have it it's not a big deal there we go i've got a teaspoon here but those were keeping so just play it by ear stir it all together really good like i said this is a really strongly flavored treat barley's got something to say i think hey barley come here Barley. What I've got here, the cookie sheet. I have already lined the cookie sheet with parchment paper. 
Now, alternatively, you could um, you could grease your cookie sheet. Um, don't use wax paper that will melt. Don't use that. But uh, parchment paper is very good. And what we're going to do, we're just going to drop this by the spoon fill, just like you would make drop cookies. They don't have to be pretty. I like mine a little bit chewier because, like I said, I do use them as pill pockets. So when the dogs need to take a pill, I hide it in these softer treats. So, and they're not gonna, they're not gonna rise. They're not gonna spread out here. So, don't worry about leaving extra room on your cookie sheet. Just drop them on there. Hey, Barley, you like that? Come here, Barley. Come here and say hi to everybody. Come here. This is Barley. He's my treat tester. It smells good, doesn't it? Almost done here. All right. So we're going to pop this in the oven now. Oops. We'll come back and get that when we're all done. That's going to cook about 45 minutes. So let's look here. Let's get us another recipe. The second recipe I want to make is also super simple. And this is one that I use a lot with barley. This is a baby food training treat recipe. Now, to talk about simple, this has only two ingredients. Well, I guess three if you want to count the water. So what you're going to need is some baby food. And cream of wheat. This is the original cream of wheat. So for baby food, um, you can choose any of the meat flavors. Um, this is chicken. The other day I made beef. Um, they've got turkey, ham, whatever your dog's favorite is. You can even have, you can mix it up. So you want three, three little um, jars. If you, if you can't find baby food, you could also, um, you know, put some chicken into the blender or food processor and really, you know, liquefy it. So that'll work. And what, first, before I do that, I want to show you this really neat tray that I bought the other day. And this is what I'm using to make the training treats. This is called a pyramid tray, or pyramid mat, actually, pyramid baking mat. So you've probably seen these for cooking chicken or meat in your, uh, in your oven. So there's little tiny pyramids all over the silicon mat. So the traditional way to use it would be to put your chicken breast or whatever up on top of the pyramids and have that in your, um, in your cookie sheet or in your baking tray. And that lets the juices flow away from the chicken breast and then your chicken breast is gonna be um, crisper. It's gonna be, and it's out of that juice and be less oily. Well, if you turn over the pyramid baking mats, and there's, there's lots of brands of these you can find, they have, all the little pyramids are hollow on the back. So you see they're all little hollow things. So now we can make hundreds of tiny training treats at the same time, just with this one mat. So this is really, a really neat thing. The dogs love them. It makes, so each, each training treat, as you can see, is just tiny, tiny, very tiny. So we're gonna put this on a cookie, just a cookie sheet. I put a little, I put a little bit of parchment paper on this because um, I know from experience I'm probably going to have a little bit left over. I'm going to make a few drop cookies, a little bit bigger ones than the training treats. But if you've never used training treats before, they are really a great way to treat your dog frequently. Um, you can give your dog training treats just one after another to reward for that good behavior you're seeing. Like if you're you're teaching your dog a new skill. Um, or if he's in a stressful situation and you're trying to get your dog's attention on you, you know, keep watch me, watch me. And give your dog treats as you continue to see that good behavior. So these are very tiny treats. So you're not, it's not like you're overloading your dog with calories or filling your dog up. 
So the whole purpose of these training treats is to be really, really tiny. And that's what that mat accomplishes. Now, if you don't have a pyramid baking mat, then what you can do is just pour this dough, and it's going to be a real heavy dough, onto a cookie sheet and cook it, and then cut it up with, um, with a pizza cutter after it's done. That'll work too. So like I said, I'm using three of these today. These are all chicken today. My dogs like pretty much all of the meat varieties of baby food. All right, last one. There's Jetty again. She's still looking for that mackerel. It's funny, if you do have cats, like we do, we have three, they like these treats just as much as the dogs, especially the fish ones. Okay. There's our three baby food jars. Now, the next thing, before I add the water, I'm going to add two packets of this cream of wheat. It's about half a cup of cream of wheat. You don't have it in packets or if you need to substitute something. So this is the original cream of wheat instance, original flavor. This will be for dogs who have no problems with wheat, of course. Gonna mix it up. And I've got here about half a cup of water. I'm gonna just do a little at a time. You want it pretty runny because you're gonna need to get all this down into the grooves of this mat. So you need something about cake consistency, not really cookie consistency. It needs to be pretty, pretty runny there. All right, so got it all mixed up good. So what we're gonna do is just drop a lot of our mixture right in the middle of that baking tray. And if you've ever, well, let's go ahead and just do all of it. Just most of that in there. If you have ever grouted tile, and you already know how to do this, basically what you want to do is just push it out so that it's getting down into those little squares. And it's kind of, you just keep going back and forth with the spatula. If you have a, a scraper, a kitchen scraper, that'll work fine too. Just something to just keep it all moving here. And it says there's 500 squares. I've not counted them, but it does make a ton of training treats. And don't be worried if the, um, the batter, if you can't get it completely even and off all of it, you know, these will break apart really, really easily. They're very lightweight treats, which is a good thing when you're using, when you're making training treats because you don't want to weigh your dog down. You, you want to give your dog a treat and, you know, they can just eat it instantly because you want to continue with the training. You don't want them sitting and chewing the treat. That's not the purpose of the training treat. It's just to reward that Good behavior instantly. We're just still going here. See, I'm just scraping it across all of the squares. Almost here.
These are nice dry treats too. If you want to put them in your in your treat bag, your bait bag, your dog walking bag, they're not greasy treats at all. All right, we've about got it here. So I've got a little bit left over, which I knew I would from the other times I've made this. What I'm going to do is just make me some little drop cookies here with a leftover. I like those too. But this is this is a very easy recipe because it has so few ingredients, and they are ingredients you can find right now. Because I know it's such a challenge to find some things in the grocery store. The moment. And these, both of these treats we prepared today, which you want to do when you, when you, um, when you get them out of the oven for storage, you can store them in your refrigerator for about, since they're meat flavored treats, meat treats can be stored about five days. Um, usually what I do, I take the treats out that I want for that day's chaining or walks and I, um, you know, we'll set those aside in a bag and then I'll refrigerate the rest. If you should make, you know, if you get ambitious and you do quite a few at a time, and you know, that's more than a week's worth, then just freeze the rest and then thaw them out. Now, um, if you want a crispy treat, you will want to keep those in the oven a little bit longer. Um, these are so small, they really bake up. They're all pretty crisp anyway. But to crisp them, we're going to put them in the oven for 25 minutes at 350. Then when, they, when we get them out, we're going to, um, Take them out of the um, out of the silicon tray. And just leave them on the cookie sheet. Put them back in the oven that's now off. Crack the oven door just a bit. If you need to, if you need to, you can put a wooden spoon or something there to keep it cracked and open. So that's going to let the moisture that's in the oven dissipate, and that's going to make our treats a lot crispier. If you want a chewier treat, uh, like the sardine treats, I like those a little bit chewy. Um, the bigger ones are going to be chewier generally anyway, but if you wanted to make those crispy, you'll just keep them in, keep them in a little bit longer, and when you turn it off, crack that door and let them sit there until they totally cool in the refrigerator. That'll always crispen up your treats. So we're going to pop these in the oven, and then I'll, I will come back and show you how the finished product turns out. 